Appreciate everybody for jumping on. Tonight's topics, what those are going to include. Um, we're going to do a quick review of just the shape drawing in terms of the arrows. From there, we will show you just quickly how to create those into a shape library and doing that quickly. We're going to get into some scouting report material that is going to include some Microsoft Excel chart integrations. Uh, going to do some special teams charts, uh, opponent formation, scouting report type of deal. And then lastly, going to finish off with some video integration to help you guys and girls get prepared for uh, clinic season. So that way you guys can get rolling with that footage. So getting started in PowerPoint, everything that we're going to do tonight is going to be in the slide size of a custom slide. And then we're going to drop down and choose the letter. So from the letter, what we're going to do is make everything landscape tonight. So it doesn't matter if you go portrait or landscape. I just personally prefer, per, uh, prefer landscape just because it's going to transition to a digital playbook a little bit better. Um, with things kind of moving the way they are now, it's just a, it's a good way to go forward with your material. So we're going to change that and ensure, ensure the fit, and then I can delete everything out. In regards to our review of our shape drawing, so go back. We created our football tab. I'm going to grab my shapes. I've got our free form shape and we're just going to start by single clicking. And then on the second click, you can actually, you know, move it anywhere you want. And on that second click, I can go ahead and create that post route. And then I'll double click to end it. Once you've ended that, I'm going to go back to my football tab and go to my shape outline. This is going to allow you to select that width. So we'll go with four and a half. Okay, I can choose my ending arrow, your end cap, whatever you want that to look. And maybe because we're drawing wide receiver routes, I may make it red. So that way I can start to utilize this for all my scout concepts. So now if I right click that object and go set as default shape, I'm gonna go right back to my free form and now I can start building out my route tree. Well, there's a post, now I can single click and hold shift. When you hold shift, it's gonna lock that motion or that line typically in a 90, 45 degree angle, one of those. So if I go to my 90, bam, now I can crank it, double click to finish, there's my dig. Now, the best thing about the free form is that if you grab that corner, you can adjust the width of that line and the height, but not only that, if you kick it and go the opposite direction, now you've just essentially easily flipped that line. So this is a really, really good tool in terms of drawing, but now we can actually start to build out essentially our route tree. So here's a slant, all right? Now I can go boom, five yards, there's a little hitch. Can grab my free form, go vertical, 15 yards, there's a comeback. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm just building all the different routes that I may have for my route tree. So as you continue to progress, you go ahead and hit F12 to save as. Well, now this is my shape library moving forward as I draw throughout PowerPoint. So there's my comeback. Now we start getting into the curved routes. Well, I just want to create a uh, shallow cross. So I'm gonna single click to start and I want the shallow cross to end up somewhere around here. So I double click to end that line right click and kick it back to edit points. And now it's gonna add our start black point and then our end black point. I can click that line and then adjust the bevel with that white box on both sides. Now you've got yourself a little shallow cross. And then I can duplicate that object by going control D. And if I right click and go back to edit points, well, I can actually click and drag and move that point associating it in the right direction well, now what I've just done is I've created a nice little wheel concept. So then if you want, you can shrink that up. There's your wheel coming off the slot receiver, going vertical up the outside. So utilizing that shape tool, it, it, the freeform shape is going to be really helpful and beneficial. And like I said, build that shape library. That might be your offensive shapes. Then you go down and if you're drawing the defenses, you draw your blitzes, you draw your jets, your stunts, your Tom, your tugs, whatever and build that library as you progress throughout the system. So I think that that could be really beneficial for you if you're just now learning PowerPoint. And you know, once you draw it once, you're done. You don't have to draw it again. Just keep using uh, that copy paste workflow. The next piece that we're gonna get into now, and that's just the, the quick review, 
but we want to start building out our, you know, our, our Monday meeting our Sunday meeting or anything like that, or our handouts for our players. So we're just going to create a simple kickoff chart. So I'm going to right click the screen and I created these essentially back the last portion of our series. So you can always go back and see how I created them, but we're going to add a background and it's going to be a dead background PNG. So I'm going to go to my picture and go to insert from file. Now within my documents folder, I've created a, a webinar background folder essentially. And we're going to start with our kickoff chart. So now when I double click and add in that PNG file, well, here's my full field that I can now utilize as a kickoff chart, as a kickoff playbook, whatever it is that you want to do. But we're going to use this to essentially map our kickoff team. And we're going to look at the kick yards, where the ball landed and return yards and how the play ended as well. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go up to the insert button. And last week we talked about the insert table function, which is great. Don't, don't get me wrong. That's an awesome function to be able to do it. But if you're trying to work efficiently, go ahead and add an Excel spreadsheet. So by adding that Excel spreadsheet, it's kind of going to turn around your image. And now I can set the width of this Excel spreadsheet. And if I right click that object and go to the worksheet object and go open, well, now it's going to open up that specific worksheet within an Excel document. From here, you can create your chart that you want to insert within PowerPoint. But you can always insert it, you know, you can always create this in Excel and copy and paste it. But if you just want it to embed in that, um, in that PowerPoint, this is that workflow. So we're going to start with the number of kickoffs. And then we essentially want to run a report in DV Sport Huddle XOs. But now we're going to get our cut up and I'm just going to do 10 plays. So we've got kick yards, where the ball landed, the number of return yards. All right. And then where the ball ended at the end of the play. Now within this column, I'm going to leave it blank for right now, but that's going to be our average row. Below that, I can go numbers one and two. And then if you highlight numbers one and two, in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a black box. Well, now you can click and drag that to create number 10. Well, now I'm actually going to highlight all of those cells. And then I will essentially want to drop in in all borders. And then I just personally like having a centered text. Now, if you want the, the cell to essentially be the width of your words, if you double click the edge of that line and that cell for that column, it's going to expand it. If you want to go the quick way, there's a triangle just above the one and to the left of the A. That's going to select all cells. And now I can double click any one of those end columns and it's going to adjust the whole sheet to fit that format. So now number one, what I'm going to do is, is I've got a chart on another screen and I'm just going to copy and paste because you guys don't want to see me spend five minutes copying and pasting or inputting numbers. So what we're going to do is just copy this. All right, control C. And now at number one, I've dropped it in. All right, one too many, there we go. So there's my chart essentially. So kickoff number one was 62 yards. All right, it landed in the end zone. So that's a touchback, no return. So there's your play end. So after you've populated those figures, well now I essentially wanna get an average up at the top. So if I hit the equal sign, it's gonna bring up my formulas. And now I can type the word average and insert a left parentheses. Now I'm gonna click and drag from 10 to one, close my parentheses and hit the enter button. Now I get an average of our kicker has put it out down there 59 yards. Same thing with that black box in the corner. If you click and drag it, now it's gonna take that same formula and apply it to C, D and E. Basic Excel you know, workflow, but definitely something that's helpful. So now if you want, you can always add a little bit of color so we can drop in a, a purple background. All right, now we've got a white top. So it just cleans it up, make it custom to your color, uh, your color code at, at your school, do things like that. Now when I close it, it's gonna insert that chart, but it's still just the two cells two by two. So if you double click it, it's gonna open back up. And now from here, there is a black, box that you can essentially expand upon so that way you can populate all the different cells that you have. Now I can click out and then I'm just going to keep adjusting that to where it fits. 
So we'll double click, pulls it back out. All right, there's my play end and I wanna avoid the white area on the right. Now I can drop that in. There's my kickoff chart, which I've integrated with Excel. And now I've got my field diagram. Numbers are good on the side for a chart. If you've got kids that are, are a little bit more visual, this is a really quick and easy process. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a circle here. So I'm gonna go back to the home button, my shapes. All right, we're just gonna drop in a circle and here's number one. All right, I'm gonna go back and change my font color to black and then since this kick, since number one went in the end zone, now I can change that outline to green. Number one kickoff went where? It went in the end zone. Now I can duplicate that for numbers, you know, two, three, six, and 10. Time sake, just don't worry about it. I'll show you the final product. Now we're gonna go ahead and drop in a kick that didn't make it into the end zone. So we're gonna change our color to red and then we wanna essentially fill it with white. Now I can zoom in and I know that play four landed 56 yards downfield, which puts it at the four yard line. So I'm gonna triple click and change that to number four. All right, now I can drop it on the target in which it landed at the four yard line. What I then wanna do is I'm gonna add an arrow that's going to show the vertical distance of where this kick ended up netting. So it landed at the four, they returned it to the 12, which means they finished at the 16. So now I'm just gonna draw a line that goes from the edge all the way down to the 16 yard line. Now I can change the color and I can change that weight. Now you've got yourself a nice little visual for the kids in terms of the net for that kickoff. So essentially what you do is we're gonna highlight this again and then duplicate it. Now I can slide down to number five, 58 yard kick, it landed at the two, they returned at 13 yards, ball finished at the 15. Now I can change that up to where it landed, triple click, change it to five, ball ends up at the 15, there's your chart. So as the season goes on, you can progress with this from a kickoff location. Your kicker gets to see where his target points, where the ball is landing, and then your kickoff cover team gets a nice little representation of how we're performing as soon as that ball gets netted. And, and you know, what's our gain, what's our loss? You know, are you giving up a first down on every kickoff return? To me, that's a great goal. We want less than 10. Don't let them get a first down by catching that ball on kickoff return. So I think that that piece is, is really beneficial. Um, you know, and to see a, a final version, I'm gonna go control C and pull over from a previous one I created, drop it in, there's your figures, there's an example of a chart. Um, so I think that's a, a really good nugget for kickoff cover, it's simple. It's easy to see. It's really good to associate your goals that you're going to do each week on your team meeting. Um, just a very simple kickoff chart. And then utilize this field later on for your playbook. So that way, if you're trying to show fits or anything like that, or drills where people need to be on the field during practice, utilize that field so that way you don't click on it. It just saves you time. So I think that that's a really good nugget. Now, to save time when you start building out the next chart, just duplicate that slide. So I'm gonna to go to Control D and now I've got my figures. So we've got our one and we've got our four. And then what I'm gonna do is delete everybody else. And then I'm gonna leave my chart right here. We want to essentially move towards our punt cover chart and do essentially the same concept, except we're gonna add in a lot more statistical categories. So I'm gonna right click my screen format the background and go to insert from file. And now I'm going to choose my punt chart. The difference in the punt chart is now it's a numerical representation on the field. So we're going to start essentially the ball was punted from the zero yard line. And if your punter had a 40 yard punt, well, now you can notice that the numbers are going to go 10, 20, 30, 40. Well, that's where the ball landed. So this is gonna give you a nice little representation of an immediate distance from zero to 60 or however far you wanna create that field. In regards to our punt chart, so I'm gonna right click, format object, and then open. So now I can insert my punt chart of what I have. So I'm gonna go back to uh, another document just for time's sake, and then I'll walk you through which items we've selected. 
All right, so we're just gonna go down to here, bring this over. All right, and then paste over the top. So in regards to what we're gonna use for the punt team for this drill, we've got obviously the number, the average, and then one through 10. We've got our punt yards, so obviously distance from snap to the uh, where the ball was caught, how many return yards, what the final net was, and then what the result was. Are you making them fair catch or are they having a chance to return it? And then the average ending field position on those punts. Now, one of the things that you may ask is, well, how do we measure a goal of the ball was inside the 20, inside the 10 or 15, whatever you set that mark, just go ahead and highlight it right there. That way you signify, hey, we had three punts that were inside the 20-yard line. Are we meeting our goal out of the 10 for that season? So once you have those objects, everything looks good. I'm going to click my triangle and then adjust the column so I can tighten it down and make it fit nice. Close it out. Okay, now it's going to open back my chart. So there we go. I'm going to double click because I know that I'm missing one category. So now I can slide it over. There's our punt chart, okay? The bottom half of this space that we're going to utilize for punt is going to be a separate chart in regards to our timings. So what we want to measure with this is I want to measure the snap time, the get off time, and the operation time. So I'm going to duplicate my chart, drop it down here at the bottom, right click, worksheet, object, and open. Okay, from here, I'm just gonna delete. So I'm gonna highlight everybody, right click delete. And then I'm gonna go grab my other sheet and paste it in into A1. So now you can see that we've got snap, get off, our operation time, which is the combination of snap and get off. Then you've got your punt hang time there as well. So here's our sheet, do our triangle, click, close it. Now it's gonna automatically update, and then I can double click and adjust my square down here on the side to bring that back in. All right, so there's my 10 snaps, there's my snap, my get off, my operation, my hang time. Now we're gonna start building our chart in regards to the actual punts. So punt number one was 43 yards, so I can kick that back to the 43 yard line. Punt number two was at the 50. So now I can bring that back and there's a couple different ways that you can do this. You can either A, just go numerically right across the sheet or B, you can actually show exactly where that ball landed on that diagram. So if punt number two was a right directional kick, you can identify it as the two right there. If one ended up on the hash mark, drop it right there. The key to this is now we're going to draw a line from where we punted from. So if I grab my free form, let's say that we started punt number one on the right hash and we ended up kicking it across the formation and landed here. So now there's your directional and then I can duplicate it and drop it on the same spot. But let's say that we kicked it from just a hair inside the hash. Now I can make that adjustment and bring it back over. There you have a chance to show the direction of your kicks and whether or not you're getting efficient kicks and pinning them inside the hash or if you're kicking cross body and booming it and you don't have a lot of time for your uh, punt team to cover. So just different ideas right there. And then the other part of it is being able to show that net return. So the punt number one was a net return of zero. They fair caught it, no drawing necessary. Number two went 50, they returned at 18 yards, which means that it ended at the 32 yard line. So now I can actually drop that. And then if you zoom in, there's your 32 yard line, zoom back out. That is a hell of a visual representation to your punt team of going, guys, we boomed at 50 yards and they brought it back 18. That is a huge discrepancy in field position right there once you start talking to your team. So. I think it's personally a great visual that you can utilize and use to show. And then here's gonna be what all 10 look like off that chart. So now you've got a nice little representation of, all right, you know, punts two, three, and four, they're getting really good return yardage. Punt seven, did he muff it? it, it you ended up gaining one yard off that negative one yard return. So you had a positive net. But now it also just calculates automatically for you for those averages, the net, you know, and then put how many were fair caught, six out of 10. It's, uh, 
I just think that there's really good nuggets in there that special teams kind of gets uh, shafted a little bit in terms of meetings and visuals. But I think that this is just a really good piece that you can use. Uh, I've got another one in terms of field goal, but very similar. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. And this is also big. And I learned this today. So if you're going to copy and paste these charts, I've left clicked from my webinar deal over here. All right, so I'm gonna right click and go to copy. And if I just go control V and paste it in, it doesn't actually bring the field with you. So if you ever have that problem of, well, I'm st I've got one presentation and I can't bring the field with it, well, what's the problem? When you paste in that object, right click the gray area and choose the selection that says keep source formatting. Now, when you drop that in, the PNG image will trail and follow that, uh, the background, and then that way you'll be good to go. Little water break. All right, so that's our field goal chart. So from here, it's the same thing. You chart your distance, you can chart that hang time, the get off, the operation time, but now it gives you just a little bit of a different field in regards to distance wise. So now where you've moved it back to the 50 yard line, if you've got a kicker that can boom it, you know, it's a whole total world now. If you're Harrison Bucker, you got to make this thing a whole lot further back. But for high school or anything like that, you should be able to keep it inside the 50 for the most part. So now you've got a nice solid representation of where your kicker is successful on this field and where they're not. Where are they missing? Are they missing off the left hash? If they're missing off that left hash and it comes to nut cutting time towards the end of the game, you better put the ball on the right hash. So little visuals not only help provide information for your kickers, but now it gives you as a coach a visual representation of where that kid likes the ball. He may tell you he likes it on the left, but he booms 99% of them from the right. Put the ball on the right. Don't give him the option. So I think that that's something that can help you guys out from a special team standpoint of just being able to utilize these different charts, uh, the Excel integration, let the Excel do the math for you. Like I said, you can copy and paste and bring it over. Totally up to you or you can make it work with an Excel. Uh, but those are your, your special teams charts. Um, utilize the PNG in that field background. I think that's a, a big piece of it. So that way you're not having to click that field, move it around and try and center it back. And why can't I click anything? It's gonna make your life a lot easier. Next up, um, we're gonna get into the world of opponent scout charts. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an offensive formation report scouting chart, essentially. So we're going to get to like, let's say the top two or the top three formations, and you just want to create a summary report for, for your team. And you're going to break it down you know, one sheet at a time. So I'm going to delete everybody out of here. And then I'm going to go back to my format background and make it a solid white fill. Now what we want to do is we want to build out our basic formation. So if you've got a formation saved from another document or you can build it, you essentially just want to drop that into the center of your diagram. From here, I'm going to go back and create our Excel charts, but now we want to create it to where it's formation based. So I'm gonna go back to our chart from before, keep the same color scheme going, why not? All right, I can paste that in. I'm gonna move it to the center of the chart. Now, if I go to arrange, align, center, our tricks of what we learned from before, it's gonna put it right in the, in the center of that slide. I'm gonna right click, go to my worksheet object and open. From here, this is a totally different chart in which you would run reports in your video editing software to give you this data. Now what we're trying to do is create a simple visual representation for our players and our coaches to where they can digest this information. So we're gonna insert the form and our first formation is tray. So I'm just gonna extend the A right there to where it fits. Now we're gonna go the number run, the number pass, and then I'm gonna insert a couple more columns here. And if you insert it before the last one, it's gonna keep that color code and that formatting for you. Well, now I can go to percentage run and then I'm gonna go percentage pass. And then the total down here is the number of snaps. Well, from a formula standpoint, the things that we wanna insert, number one is the number of snaps. If I can tell the system exactly how many snaps are in it and not have to calculate that, 
huge help on Sundays breaking down tape. So I'm going to hit the equal sign on the keyboard and I'm going to select the number run column and then hit the plus sign and select a number pass and then hit enter. Once you do that, it's going to say zero. But if I was to put 12 run in here and 36 pass, now it's going to immediately total that number for you. So good nugget there. Next one is I want the percentage of run and the percentage of pass. So in order to do this, I'm going to hit the equal sign. So percentage run is what? It's the number of run divided by the number of snaps and hit enter. Don't worry about your division rule right there. It'll fill out on its own. Next up is pass is equal to number of pass divided by total number of snaps and hit enter. Okay. What I can do now is if I copy and paste this row down here to the bottom, it's going to calculate. So that way, if you had a summary and you had all of them, well, then you can bring it down like that. And now when you drag that mouse, it's going to keep that color code or it should keep the color code based on those objects. Um, so just a little nugget there. All right. So now our tray formation had three runs and it had eight passes. Once you get to this point, you can highlight that row and then click the percentage button. That's now going to automatically convert it to a percentage and then continuing with the color scheme. I like my runs in red and I like my passes in blue. Just a personal preference. I like visuals. So there's our basic tray formation. I can right click and hit delete. And now we can close that. There's our tray. And then I'm going to double click. And now this is going to allow me to get back to insert the total number of snaps. And then we'll go one too high. There's our tray. Now I can go to arrange align center and then put this up at the top. Okay. So there's our top little formation statistic sheet. Now, what I want to utilize in this area is going to be our hit chart. So in regards to our hit chart, very simple. I'm going to insert a text box. And now wherever the ball was ran, so they had three runs, which means that they ran power twice. What I personally like to do is to center it. If it's a run, I make it red, make it bold, change it to whatever font you want. Now I drop it right there in that area. I'm going to duplicate the same concept, and now they ran outside zone for one. So there's my power, which ended up hitting B gap. There's my outside zone. Don't worry about the, the tailback unless you get specific in regards to gun near or gun far. What you're trying to do is this is just a quick summary of a formation and utilizing a hit chart. Now I can duplicate, and I'm going to go ahead and bring in the pass concept. So I'm going to change it back to blue. Like my special one here. All right. All right. Well, what did they run on this side? They ran a simple X vert. How many times? One. Now you just take that X vert, slide it over, control D. What did we have to the three by one concept over here? They ran flood four times. I would say that's a good tendency. All right. So there's five. All right. Bam. We're here. They went, uh, they went, country boy coming up. All right. They went bubble for one. Okay. And now down here, they went four verts. And then we can say that is four, five, six, seven, eight. So two. There's your concepts right there for that hit chart. Very simple, very basic. To get even further down the line for people who don't want to see it this way, they want to read it in a chart. Do the same thing we did before. So I'm going to copy my chart, paste it down here at the bottom. And the reason I'm using this chart is we're going to have a few variables down here in regards to our run concepts. So from our run concepts, I'm going to right click and go to worksheet object open. Okay, we're going to slide this one out. And then here's our snaps. Delete these two columns. On the left side, what I'm going to include here going down is inside zone. All right, we got outside zone, toss, power, counter, draw, trap, whatever the ma major and the majors right here with this one. So now I'm just adjusting the font size right there. Delete that out. Okay, how many times did they run inside zone? Well, make sure that your sizing is all the same. All right. There were no snaps of inside zone for this. How many outside? I think it was one. How many powers? Two. Same thing. Make these red. Continue to emphasize that color. 
close it out and then double click. Now I can make my adjustment here and then I can't see it. So let me slide it back up. If you ever run into this situation, I scrolled down and I'm not able to see my chart. Well, if you double click and scroll right back up, that will give you that room. And now I can make that adjustment to where I can close it off. There's my trap. That was the last one. And then I can adjust this and drop it right down there at the bottom. So there's my inside zone chart. We're going to go back and now we're going to add in our past concepts. Well, I made a mistake and didn't put runs in there. Run concept. Okay. We can duplicate that chart by going control D. Well, now I can double click and go past concepts. Well, what's our most common past concepts that we have? I don't like working in that small window, so I'm going to go back and open it. Okay, and what we always utilized was just simple verbiage in terms of our reports. So it was five step, three step, screen, sprint out, play action, boot, and then RPOs, which is a whole totally different conversation. All right, so now I can go right back and I'm just gonna slide this over because now I just need to get a quick synopsis of our PowerPoint. And of course I slid it too far and I lost my sheet. All right, so here we go. Let's go, let's back on this one. Okay, go back to Excel. So we've got five step, no snaps. I'll consider bubble game is in the screen. So I think we said one, sprint out. You know, you guys get the gist in terms of that. So there's your charts. You can organize it however you want. And then what's key here to build that next formation is just go control D to duplicate it. Well, now if your next formation is doubles, you make the adjustment to the formation right here, and then you just start double clicking and you get back into your edit mode. Now you run your doubles report, you change your figures, you go through those whole concepts. So something that's very simple, it's a good little visual. And now when we go to control P, now you can get that idea of what this looks like. And, and I just remember Coach Simpson's office, we would do something very similar and there would be sheets all around his office. And that's what he would study as a, as a defensive mind of just seeing formation. What concepts are you getting? You know, your three by one concepts, color coding it, making it that much easier to digest for not only you, but your kids and your coaches. And that's a very simple use the tools that doesn't take a lot of effort to put together those hit charts. So I think that that's something that can be very beneficial from a defensive standpoint each week that, Hey, top four formations, here you go. Shrink it and put it into one box. You know, try and find different ways to maximize your time of being able to digest information and not a lot of time trying to draw and create the information. So next up, we're going to work on an opponent favorite third down pressures look. So I'm going to control M and that's going to create a new slide. I can go control A, delete everybody out here. Now I'm gonna right click the screen or if it's still up, format background. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert my four up report. So we created this from our last session. Here's my four up report. Now I'm gonna to go to football text box. Here's our opponent favorite. Ooh. Third down pressures. Okay, I'm gonna increase the size of that font. So there's my title section. Do exactly what we did from before. So now I can copy my chart, go back, paste it in. We make our changes. So all I'm doing up here is I've got four drawings. So my chart should only have four pieces of information. So I can delete. All right, now I'm gonna to go to the third down pressure. Okay, and then instead of get off, I may just have snaps and then delete the average of snaps as well. So now in regards to their pressure, it may be snake B, it may be will A, maybe cross, maybe corner fire. So right there is your top four blitzes out of these concepts and then you just chart in the number of snaps. So four, two, two, one, whatever it may be. Close it and save it. Now your chart lives up here. Double click, make our adjustment. OK, 
Okay, so there's our box up top. I left it one high too many. Make that adjustment, close it. So there's our chart. Now, I essentially want to copy and paste from a previous deal all of your shapes. Then I can start to zoom in. Well, once I zoom in, here's their favorite pressure. Well, what does the snake B concept look like? So I'm just going to grab my free form shape. Snake B is him coming off the edge. And then I'm just going to make that an outline, make it red with this type of arrow. Right click, and then I can go set default shape. Now we're just going to start going down the line. The end's going to drop. The corner is in a cover three look. So he's here, free form shape. And then also with the free form shape, you can actually click and drag. So that way, if you just wanted to round things, you can do it that way as well. I personally just like the straight lines. So we're here, boom. So now he's gonna skiff, all right? That seam curl inside flat, all right? There's our cover three look to it. Now we can draw our pressure. So if you draw the pressure, maybe you make the people in green be the actual blitz. The red is your actual coverage. So here's my blitzer coming off the edge that's green, okay? We've got our Mike linebacker, he's going in there as well. And then if I wanna quickly copy and paste this property to here, I've selected that green line, control shift C, select the red line, control shift V, will automatically paste it. I can just set that as default if I wanna go that route as well. All right, so now we can actually bump him, boom, he's off a three right there. Control shift C, control shift V. So there's your pressure. Now from the D line standpoint, so bam, he's cop, he's off the edge, making sure that he contains on pressure. So I'm here, we're crossing face. And then that rush, he's trying to get to that front side A gap. So there's your number one pressure that you may see from the defense in regards to third down. Very simple concept in terms of getting that. Now we go right back and then I can paste in my field again so here's our third look, or our, I'm sorry, our second look. It's just a simple Mike A pressure. So now we go here, boom, so I'm outside, okay? With the Mike A, maybe they set the front to the boundary. So now I can make that adjustment. So there's my three, two I, and then we'll leave him out in a seven. So I'm here, boom, all right. Maybe he crosses all the way, so we're here. And then I can just control, click and drag. There's your stunt. Boom, here's our blitz right there. Then you can draw in those coverages. So you get the idea of what we're trying to create for that four up, but that's another key piece that didn't take me long to draw. You know, As soon as you have your information on in huddle or wherever it is that you're creating those cut ups, it's all about how fast can you draw and how quickly can you transfer it to paper for people to be able to digest it. Um, so there's our, our third down favorite pressures, essentially. The direction I want to go for the last 12 minutes is in relation to your videos of what you have online and what you can pull and how to integrate that within your PowerPoint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new slide and go control M. All right, and then I can delete this out. And now we're just gonna drop in a title from a different presentation. And what I'm trying to teach is the stab lift progression. So I showed you a little bit of this the other night on the uh, previous webinar. So now we're just gonna add video to it. So I've got my slide ready to roll. Now I'm actually gonna open up the MP4 file that I have. And if you're a coach over the years, you've probably gathered more MP4s than you actually know what to do with. But maybe you don't have an idea of how to efficiently pull a video clip from that and put it in a teach presentation or anything like that. One of the best things I think Coach Simpson and we used to teach off of was turnover tapes, but showing like the NFL replay to it of being able to download a YouTube clip show the, the, the violent strikes on the ball and getting it out. And this is that process that allows you to take your NFL game pass film or whatever it may be to that way you can drop it in your presentation. So I'm gonna go to my MP4 and open this up. And then if you click the pencil icon down here at the bottom, this is gonna allow you to edit the document and trim it. So now we're gonna trim this document and I'm gonna get to my stab lift progression 
that Coach Mike Pelton used to uh, teach. So right here is our stab lift. So I'm going to hit the space bar. I can click the screen to play it. And I'm going to stop right here. This is the mark in for our first clip of the stab lift. So the white dot there is my start. And then the white dot here is going to be my end. And then I can bring this all the way down to wherever I want that clip to end. So right before Francis goes. Now in the right hand corner, I can go to save as. Now I'm just gonna go back to my documents folder. We're gonna create a new folder called D-Line Presentation. Within that D-Line Presentation, here's the stab clip and then P01. And I've labeled it that way for practice clip 01. I'm gonna go to save, it's gonna generate that clip and then that's done. Now I'm just gonna adjust the white box down here at the bottom and then we're gonna fish to the next example. So I'm gonna go to Pat right here. So now there's the start of Pat's clip and now I adjust the white bubble to get the end of Pat's clip. So it's done. Don't worry about being exactly right. PowerPoint has a way to trim it inside of that so you can get really specific with your meeting time. Now I'm gonna go to save as same thing. I'm just going to click the screen right there where it says P01. Delete that and go P02. Hit save. Boom. Makes the adjustment. Now I want my game clip. So we're going to go right here to the very start of the snap. Just a little bit before. doesn't matter. And now I want to kick it to the end of the snap. Save as. Now I can go stab. Instead of P02, here's our game clip 01. Hit save. Now I've generated just those little pieces right there that's going to allow you to trim that old MP4 that you have on your external hard drive. I'm going to close this out and now I'm back in the PowerPoint world. If I want to add video to this clip, you go to insert and now in the far right corner of the screen, you can select the video icon and go video on my PC. This is going to open up. And then you can navigate right there to Documents D-Line Presentation. And I'm going to start with our first practice clip. So I can double click that. Then it's going to insert. Then you can actually make that adjustment as well and change wherever you want that line to be. Now when I hit play, it's included that stab lift concept right there at the beginning. So there's my little PowerPoint deal that we created back in the day. And then here's the stab lift concept. Now, I've gone too far with the end of my presentation. So when you go to present at Glazier and you've got all this overlapping film and you're wasting time, here's how you can combat that and tighten it down some. So when I select that video, there's a new tab that's going to pop up here for playback. That's going to allow me to click the playback button. And if I go to trim video, it's going to pop a new window. Well, since I'm trying to trim the end of that clip, you want to drag that red bar and then you can actually go frame by frame with it as well. So that's just something that can help with that piece. And now we're just going to end it right there or Keyshawn and, and uh, Amp finish up. Now I'm going to click OK. Now when I go stab lift, there's my intro. Boom, there's the stab, get it off his head and then the clip ends exactly where I put it. So now... I want to continue my progression. I don't want to go stab lift and have to type that again and make sure it's exactly right. Duplicate your slide, delete out your video concept right there and go back to insert. Now I can go into video, video on my PC and we're going to grab our second clip. You can adjust the height, do whatever you want with it. Doesn't make a difference. I'm going to select that video, go back to playback and choose trim. All right, now I can trim off a little at the beginning if need be. So we're just going to get Pat's foot right there. And then I can trim off the end. I don't want to include the game clip right there. It confuses people. Click OK. Now I can hit play. Boom, we're done there. Violent, take that hand, rip it off the top. There's your video. Nice little solid cut of what you were trying to show. Now I've got my game clip. Same concept. Control D to duplicate. Delete your video. Go right back to the insert button. Choose video, video on my PC, and now I'm going to grab that stab G01. So that's my game clip. I've dropped it in. I can make the adjustment however big, however tall we want to make it. I want to trim it. 
So start at the beginning. Yep. All right. I want to avoid the official having to move back. So many times when you go to clinics, they're fast forwarding through the offense, looking to the sideline and the coach is just sitting there fast forward by four plays at 10 seconds a piece. You've wasted 40 minutes of your presentation. So adjust the clips right here within PowerPoint and that's, what's going to make it more efficient. Now, when you click, okay, boom, you've trimmed that clip. Here's your stab lift progression. So now I can go back to play one. And when I click slideshow, I'm going to go from the current slide. And then what it's going to do is you may have a menu that pops. It's actually on my other one. So we're good. But down here at the bottom, if I hover my mouse, there are some objects down here. I don't know what they all do, but I know what this one does. Here's our laser pointer tool. So if I actually hover that mouse and I click that laser pointer, well, now it's going to give me a laser pointer. And if you want to make some sort of instruction on the screen, it's going to display it right there for you. Then you can hit the space bar to play. To rewind, I don't think you can rewind with that laser pointer, but if you hit the escape button, it's going to pull it back. And now you can use the toggle bar right here to essentially rewind that clip exactly where you want it to go while you're teaching. Bam, violent inside hand, hands on hat, keep his hand high. All right, I hit the right arrow, we go to the next, next clip. Hit the play button, boom, violent inside hand, start the clip over. And all I'm just doing is left clicking. So now you can see how crisp and centered that video looks. And then we end up going to our last clip here. Here's our game footage. I hit play. I'm going to pause it. Hey, we're going to focus on number 91 right here. So he's going to get a nice vertical step. He gets his inside hand in that chest plate and he's violent. He lifts his hand and runs him right back into the quarterback and swipes at the ball. That is a great little teaching progression where I had a long video clip of an MP4 that I had. I've trimmed it up using a free Microsoft tool. I, all I did was double click and open it. So if you've got a newer Surface or any type of Windows device, I would bet that you've got those same capabilities. But that's what's going to help you trim up your video and, and make it clear, make it concise for your clinic talks. So now you're not wasting time rewinding through dead plays and dead information. Um, I think it's a, a really beneficial process. I think it's something that's, that can be very helpful for you. And then the last piece of it is if you actually save that video. So if I save this whole concept, so webinar demo, the spelling's terrible. So here's our webinar demo and I'm going to hit save. All right. If I go to file info, there's a button right here for compressed media. So if you're going to email this to your players for them to look at on their PowerPoint app, well, what you can do is you can compress that media to standard. By doing that, we're going to shrink the actual video size and compress that drawing. So that original file was 3621, that's 57, and then the last one was 6, so 117. Well, I've actually just decreased that by eight megabits. That is a huge deal from a efficiency and running on computers. Your kids don't have to have it in HD like that to be able to see it. So you're taking your large Kodak, your, your HDMI film, and you're compressing it to where it's easier to be seen on a cell phone. It's easier to be seen on an iPad, things like that. So that piece right there is what's going to shrink that PowerPoint and allow you to take it with you wherever you go. Um, so once I can close, you can get out of that PowerPoint. But uh, I think that those are some really good nuggets from tonight. Um, let me bust out my notes here. Uh, but please, the next 10 minutes, I'm going to go through our, our PowerPoint demo in, in terms of our 3.5. There's a lot of same heads on here. Um, so we, you know what? There's 11. Yeah, we're not going to do that just because I, I know everybody and I know that everyone here has seen it. So I don't want to waste your time with that. Um, but as always, if you visit our website, so proquickdraw.com, let me pull this up. What you can do is go to our resources tab. This is going to have all the previous versions of our webinars from Visio and PowerPoint. So now if I drop down to the Visio and PowerPoint section, we've got our Visio shortcuts key. So if you click there, print this out, put it next to your desk. If you're on the PowerPoint side of things, same thing, print this out, put it right there next to your desk. I think that these are really useful 
Um, there's not a lot of drawing ones, but it's definitely something that can help you to kind of progress your, your PowerPoint mastery. Um, and then down here at the bottom, you'll find our previously recorded webinars.